Hey, Walter Sorrells back with more tips for the knife maker. Today, making a vacuum forming table for making Kydex sheaths. Today's video is sponsored by Forge Down Under, the fantastic new blacksmithing competition show from Australia that's available free to you on YouTube. So today's build will be a vacuum table for forming Kydex sheaths, though the basic process will work for thermoforming anything like holsters or whatever. Um, now there's a bit of a twist to this particular project in that what I'm aiming for ultimately is to be able to make sheaths on my CNC machine. I want to actually run the vacuum table on my CNC mill so that when I'm done, taking it off the CNC machine, all that's left to do with that sheath is to assemble it. Now, that said, I'm not gonna get into too much of the sheath making process today. Uh, this is not about the CNC part of making a sheath. The whole focus here is gonna be on building the actual vacuum table. Now, if you're not familiar with them, there are two main ways of thermoforming plastic uh, in the knife making world. Uh, that would be Kydex, Boltron, all kinds of other thermoforming plastics and making them into sheaths. The simplest way is to use a Kydex press and that's what we've been doing here with my Tactics Armory knives for years. However, I want to go the vacuum forming route where you suck down this silicon membrane onto a mold to vacuum form the sheath because it offers some advantages that presses don't. All right. Let's get into it and I'll talk more about it as we go. Now, I have to say from the outset that this build was a little speculative. I've been planning this design in one way or another for several years, but I've only just gotten around to finishing it up. I've never built a vacuum table, so I wasn't sure it would work as planned. Spoiler alert, it does amazingly well, if I may say so myself. But the whole thing is made from MDF, which has a lot of advantages when you're working with it, but eh. It pretty well sucks for anything that might get wet, twisted, torqued, yanked, abraded, or pretty much used as anything other than subflooring in a house. So, why MDF then? Simple. It's cheap and easy to work with. This was really a test to see if the idea works. It does, and so when this MDF table starts showing a little wear, I'll remake it from aluminum, which will last pretty much forever. If you're not familiar with how vacuum tables work in making Kydex sheaths, or for that matter, holsters, the idea is that you have a flat surface, a table, connected to a vacuum source. A form's put on that table, it could be the knife itself or whatever, and then a piece of hot floppy thermoplastic like Kydex or Bolteron is laid over the top of the form, and then a top which has a thin, flexible silicone membrane is laid over that. Then the air is evacuated from the space under the membrane, sucking the membrane down around your form so that it molds the mushy kydex exactly, exactly to that form. Once it cools and hardens, the kydex sheath or holster is removed and assembled. Holes are drilled, the outline of the sheath is cut out, then the whole thing's assembled with belt clips and all that sort of thing added in the process. Now, a lot can go wrong when you use a press. The idea here is to take all the guesswork out, as well as a lot of the upfront fiddling with molds and all the screwing around with heat guns and stuff like that. If you've done this with presses, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Hey guys, let me jump in here to tell you about today's sponsor, Forge Down Under, the new blacksmithing contest show from Australia. Forge Down Under, free to you on YouTube, is a kind of familiar spin on the knife making contest idea. The cool thing to me though, watching Forge Down Under was that I felt like, hey, this is a show that's run by Smiths, not by Hollywood guys. And that's actually because it is. Now the format's you know, pretty similar to shows that you've seen before, you know which one I'm talking about, but the feels, I guess I would say more intimate and the show is more kind of educational in its vibe. Uh, so all the contestants and the judges are focusing not so much on the competition, but also on learning about how to make quality knives. You can find a link to the first show in the description or search for Savage Custom Creative on YouTube. The second show drops on 
July 15. So catch the first show now and then grab that second one when it drops. All right, back to our project. Now I use a Pearson pallet system on my Tormox CNC machine, which allows very accurate swapping of pallet bases. So the aim here is for this whole unit to bolt down to the Pearson pallet for easy installation and removal. The top, shown here in my Fusion 360 design, will have a central air hole with a network of little channels to suck air from the entire table area. There also are several mounting holes which will allow you to accurately and repeatably mount a variety of different size sheath forms for a variety of knives. There will also be some little clamps that I'm not showing here that will hold the Kydex down after it's hardened. And there's also a square hole here. This is a reference feature which allows you to set the zero so that the CNC machine knows exactly where to drill and cut the kydex each and every time. That's the whole key to this thing is that it allows you to just repeat the same thing over and over. After cutting up the pieces that will eventually be sandwiched together to make the table, I'll get started machining the table itself. We start by drilling quarter inch holes that will be used to anchor the table to the pallet using quarter 20 screws. As CNC machining goes, this is pretty simple stuff and you could actually do this just by hand. Let me anticipate what a lot of you are probably saying, which is, I don't have a CNC machine, so why in the world would I wanna finish watching this video? Couple points here. First, CNC routers have gotten hella cheap lately, so if you're somebody who makes sheaths or holsters in any volume, that might be a good avenue for you. But beyond that, there's some neat details here that you could use to make a good vacuum table setup, no CNC involved. With a little ingenuity, most of this build can be done with pretty standard carpentry tools, a drill press, a router, table saw, whatever. Okay, enough said on that. You can blast away on MBF at ridiculous speeds if you want to, but I wanted to be able to catch it if I pulled some idiot move as I was running the program. So I'm running at really relaxed speeds. Then the little location feature I mentioned is milled out, followed by six mounting holes or pockets which will be used to mount the sheath forms, all with quarter inch two flute carbide end mills. I think this turned out to be an excessive number of these and I'll probably just do four little holes and they should work fine for any size form. Next the air hole in the center is milled out with a 3 8 two flute end mill. And then using a chamfer mill I'll run the surface air channels. followed by chamfers around most of the features to make them a little easier to drop stuff into. Next layer down in this sandwich of MDF pieces is a second layer which will have the air tube running through it. So I drilled a quarter 20 mounting holes along with a pocket for the air tube. After that, more mounting holes for the third piece of the sandwich, which is the base. Last thing to be machined is the frame for the top, which is basically just a big rectangular cutout. I'll do that manually. I'm working at the absolute limits of my CNC machine work envelope as well as at the limits of the pallet, so the clamping here is janky in the extreme. The smart way to do this would be to anchor it directly to the work table with table clamps on top of a sacrificial piece of MDF, but I didn't feel like disassembling the whole Pearson system, which is a bit of a hassle. Now the membrane is going to be held on by neodymium magnets. You'll see how in a minute which required holes for the magnets to be drilled around the periphery of the table and the top frame. I didn't have sufficient work envelope to do any of that on my Tormach, so I had to do it manually on my mill drill. Again, if you just measured this carefully, you could do it with a hand drill. 
I more or less repeated the same drilling process on the vacuum table itself, only using a larger diameter drill so that the retention magnets would rebate into the table. Again, you'll see how this all comes together in a minute. The magnets are all epoxied into the top using good old five minute epoxy from Home Depot. Here's the silicon membrane material. This cost me about 50 bucks and there's plenty to spare for when the membrane wears out, which they do eventually. I'll just lay it out here and then pop a second set of magnets on to hold it in place. If you poke around on YouTube, you'll notice that most guys who make vacuum tables use tops that clamp the membrane in place with screws and a double layer frame. I saw somebody do this magnet trick somewhere along the way and it was obvious that this would make changing membranes way easier as well as making the frame smaller and simpler. I was concerned it might not hold very well, but that turned out not to be a problem. Trim the edges. Now for the plumbing. The vacuum is pulled with a Harbor Freight HVAC type vacuum pump. As you can see from all the crud, I bought mine for another project long ago, but they go for about a hundred bucks. I've got a little collector tank, which is not needed, a gauge, which is handy, a couple of valves, and some braided 3 8 inch vacuum hose. If you're doing this, eliminate the collector, put a gauge in line, and you're in business. Also, some barb fittings and some copper tube and some quick connects. I'll be working on the air tube now, which consists of a piece of half inch copper pipe and a 90 degree elbow, all stuff you can buy at Home Depot. The elbow fits into the vacuum hole, which is milled to 715 thou, which will give you a press fit for the elbow into the table. I've tinned the joint already, then I'll flux it up and sweat the elbow on with plumbing solder. I've already drilled a hole for the pipe to go through on the end of the second layer of the sandwich, so I'll thread the pipe through the pocket and the hole, then attach a 3 8 pipe to half inch sweat fitting the same way. Now just chain it all together, pump to pipe. I'm not going to show you all the details of the hose connections, but if you do this, it's the usual Home Depot do -si do buying a bunch of fittings to connect barb to pipe to compression to 3 8 to quarter inch to whatever the hell, with about three more trips because you always got a male or you should have gotten a female and all that. Anybody who does hose work has done this fun little game before. So here's how the thing will assemble. Before epoxying it all together at the point of no return, I'll attach all the stuff together and put a vacuum on this hammer to see if the whole thing holds vacuum. Yes, it does. So all that's left is to epoxy the thing together Add a little strategic silicone goo here and there and let everything cure. Oh, one other minor feature. You'll notice that most vacuum tables feature hinged tops. That is not a good idea for something that's going to be jumping around on a CNC machine. So, the top frame fits into this little hingey sort of setup so that it can be secured on the table with one hand, leaving the other hand free to operate the air valve. Then, after the sheath cools, the top frame is removed so that the CNC work can go on without the top interfering or getting shaken to bits. I made mine from a piece of scrap Kydex, but a better long-term solution would be to use a piece of aluminum. So there it is, ready to roll. The vacuum and the heater for the Kydex will go on this little rolling cart with the hose fittings fitted with quick connects. So as soon as I'm done, I can roll the whole thing away for convenient storage. I've tested it out as a proof of concept and you can see the basic idea here.
So this video is already running pretty long, so I'll do a separate video uh, probably several weeks down the line, maybe even a month or two down the line, once I've kind of refined my processes, I guess you'd say. So uh, anyway, even, even at this point, I can tell you just with this MDF mold, this is a total win. It's really working right. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like what we're doing here, please subscribe and make sure that you click on that bell so you get notified of all the latest videos. Want to buy a knife from me? Check out my modern blades at tacticsarmory.com. Digging the channel? You can support our video making efforts on Patreon. You know, I've been banging away on these videos for like 10 years, so I hope you'll show some love for all that hard work. Link in the cards and descriptions. Finally, if you're interested in making Japanese swords, check out my full line of Japanese sword videos where I show how to forge Japanese swords as well as how to polish them and how to make fittings, handles, and scabbards. WalterSorrelsBlades.com